The crisis in Mali continues. Yesterday's midnight deadline set by the economic community of West African states passed without the military coup leaders stepping down as they had been requested to do. So ECOWAS has now imposed diplomatic and economic sanctions on the country. Meanwhile, the north of the country is in the control of insurgent Tuareg separatists and looming drought and famine threaten an escalation of chaos in the landlocked country. Thomas Dempsey is a former US colonel. He's now civilian professor at the African Centre for Strategic Studies from where he's been observing developments in Mali. The problems that the Malian army has been encountering on the north shouldn't be a surprise to any of us that, that are familiar with West Africa and with the Malian military in particular. So it makes no difference whether they're government troops or, or post-coup troops. They're, they're simply not up to the job. I, I, the problems in the north, I'm not sure, ha have a great deal to do with, with you know, pre-coup or post-coup. And, and I'm not sure, uh, you know, it's an interesting question to me whether the coup is precipitating the problems in the north or whether the, the problems in the north are really driving the coup. The, the relationship between those two series of events, I, I think they're clearly related, but I'm not sure I understand uh, completely what that relationship is. But either way, Timbuktu is in the control of the separatists and... That doesn't look like changing anytime soon. I've taken a hard look at, at what we know about what's happening. And the truth is I'm not sure that any of the outside observers have a good feel for what's happening in Timbuktu or anywhere else in the north. And I think the initial interpretation that the, you know, the rebels have driven the army out, well, that, that may be the case, but I think it may equally be the case that what you're seeing in that portion of Mali is just sort of a general collapse, which... Uh, the various factions that are kind of associated one way or another with the rebels have, have sort of inherited. There's a lot more going on in that part of Mali than just the conflict between the government and the rebels. Looking the at the Malian army, can they recover, do you think, from uh, this, this northern defeat? Boy, that, that is the $64,000 question, <laughs> isn't it? Um, well, can you speculate? I won't ask for a... The Malian army is a small army in any case. And uh, depending on just how, how serious or how far the collapse has gone and what's happened to the army institutionally, I think it's a really valid question whether the Malian army is in the immediate future going to be able to play a significant role, regardless of what happens in, in the, uh, the resolution or, or lack thereof of the, the political situation. I think the problems in the north are a lot bigger than the military. I think you have the problem of the ongoing drought. I think we're seeing indications of, a, uh, of an incipient famine. I think what we're starting to see is evidence of, of more or less uh, a complete collapse of, of, uh, of government in these remote areas. And I, I'm not sure at all that, that the rebels, even if they are sort of in control by default, I'm really not sure the rebels are in a position to take over and deliver government services. Professor Thomas Dempsey of the Africa Centre for Strategic Studies.